tuna mayo baguette. Healthy. Brain food. Hi, I'm Steve from 1233D. Today we are going to do an unboxing, first thoughts review of the Creality K2 Combo. Stay tuned. The Creality K2 Combo is currently placed upon the floor because this is such a large beast of a machine and does warn there is a two-man lift. So I shall proceed to unbox what I can on the floor before I rope Chris the cameraman into giving me a lift because I wouldn't like to put my back out. It says pull these things here. You squeeze them in and you pull them out. I think what these do is actually secure this portion of the box to the bottom portion of the box. There we go. As if by magic. Remove. So in the foam, we have the quick start guide. I'll put that on the table. Bed. It is quite well packed. And it does actually say now we can lift said machine from the crate. Do you want to give me a lift, Chris? We'll just stick it up on a table. Yeah, so just a side note, guys. This is definitely a two-man lift. That weighs a ton. Well, there's one bit. So I think now it wants us to lift out the gubbins from in this top. So we have two spools of filament, both labelled Hyper PLA. One blue, one red. A blue and a red. I think that is the lid. The lid. Oh, we need to undo things. We need to find some tools. And here we have what is labelled as the unboxing wrench. So there's a plastic frame. Bracket is for transportation only holding the CFS unit in place with screw down to the base, which isn't the easiest location to get to the screws. So these are a little bit fiddly, but I think we're winning. Okay, that's one of them out. And that is the other one of them out. So carefully lift this out. I'll pop this to one side for a moment. And as you can see, lots more foam with even more. This is why the machine weighed so much. We have four kilograms of filament buried inside. A spool of blue, a spool of red, a spool of white, and a spool of black, all hyper PLA. So we have two of these little more trans transport clips. Basically, they're holding the the lead screw central. Next up, I can see here we have four yellow arrows indicating more transport screws. So anybody familiar with the K1 series, very similar thing. Apart from in this instance, we have four of them, so they're located in a slightly different place but very, very clearly marked with the yellow arrows. So we just pull these out. We have this little tab, which the sink fits with there. And it also have a sticker on the back here. Tear off sticker before use. That is very interesting. We appear to have any heating element, which would indicate it has a heated chamber. A screen. I do feel there may be a bracket for this screen, which there is. We have four screws in that bag. There is a right way and a wrong way fit this here i've got a little nib that sticks out so that wants to be to the bottom so the four holes i will feed the cable through and line that up pop that through the hole i won't tighten them get them all in first two three four nip them up grab the screen be very careful with these ribbon cables because they are a little bit fragile so then all we're going to do is pop that to place slide and then if you heard that positive click we're located locked Please connect to the internet and update the firmware before printing. Exclamation mark. We have the buffer. We have two screws to secure the buffer. That's fixed to the back of the machine. We have a little box. I shall open and investigate the contents. We have what appears to be an optical sensor, push fit tube connector, another piece of plastic, some clips, rubber pads, nozzle cleaning, some screws, thermal grease, a little metal clip, what appears to be a blade. So basically, in the black box, you get a load of spares, which I have not yet known Creality to do. You're missing anything, or you wear anything out. You do have some limited spares. We also have a spare unicorn nozzle, which is a 0.4. It does appear to have a hardened steel tip. We then have a spoolie holder. We picked this up on another printer that we reviewed, but they've used a very similar, similar system to this. So basically, the, the spool will sit on holder, then it feeds through a Bowden tube to the machine. I think a couple of reasons for this is it stops one filament free spooling, causing a bird's nest tangle. And it just looks a little bit more refined and finished. 
So we have here Creality filament swatches. I'm intrigued. As if by magic. All the colours of the rainbow. If these are 3D printed, I'm very impressed. And so all the bits for the CFS. And then we have a box. A Creality blinded box. Tool set. I've just caught Chris the cameraman's face lit up like a Christmas tree. He's like, ooh. So that is the contents. I believe next thing to do will be to fit the things. Let's hope the table holds out. <sighs> We have the back here two screws spool holder as some of you will be aware this used to be located on the back of the machine changing filament was a pain in the backside people came up with a mod where you could mount the spool holder on the side or use a table mount predominantly what i do they have identified a floor improved it and here we are buffer i will consult the manual because it doesn't give me a direction we have a single hole here so basically the tube will come from here into there. A CFS can then plug into that side. So, Creality logo facing up the right way. We should be golden. Just snip these down, don't go mad as, as plastic. So this one, short tube, we'll have this first. So the short tube goes in there and in there. Doesn't that look pretty? Long tube from the CFS unit to any one of these four ports. It doesn't matter which one, anyone. Remove the two covers. You then have two bags of desiccant, which are sealed to protect them from moisture. Make sure you open those. You don't need to peel them apart. They're absolutely fine like that. So pop them back inside, refit the covers, pop it up there, grab our long tube, bottom of the CFS unit, make sure it's pushed right in, and then enter there. That is that, done. So this first bag, they're all quite niftily labeled actually. So it's this end here that plugs into your buffer. The other end then plugs into the CFS unit. And then we have a longer one plugs into this hole and then into that hole. There we go. Waste chute. Please do not block the waste chute. The spool. So when I mentioned before, PTFE tube pops in there, goes to there. Filament comes up, feeds into the tube. So you get a bag for that. You get a bag of spares for CFS unit and I guess any of these that wear. So you might have seen we have a little cover marked USB. We also have RFID. We have a big Creality logo. Panels are acrylic. Okay, I think we are ready to give it a little bit of power. And she's on. Ta-da. And the screen is a tilty screen. So what we'll do is we'll just go through the the setup procedure, language selection, English, next. Remove the four screws A, B, C, and D according to the positions indicated by the yellow arrow. We've already removed, so we'll click next. Welcome to Creality 3D Printer. Please keep the green cube in the diagram clear of debris and click next. So this is a new thing that they've implemented. Basically keep the build area clear, but needless to say, do not put your hands amongst any moving parts. Yep, so we know all of this. We shall, and we will skip the Wi-Fi, and we will go to zero, zero, wet next. We are international. Self-check. Welcome to the self-check process. Please place the printing platform on which the bill plate is attached. The self-check process is expected to take around 16 minutes. We will start this and we shall be back shortly so now will be a good time to go and flip the kettle on make yourself a brew grab your favorite packet of biscuits sit down and make yourself comfortable moments later self check complete all hail the ui so i'll run through a few observations so we have the typical hot end temperature we also have the bed temperature we also have the chamber temperature temperature range in graph formation settings the, the usual so you can set your nozzle temperature your bed temperature your chamber temperature you can also set speed and you can disable the step movers you can jog your axes in any direction proceed to the filament section this is where you allocate all your colors of filament and material types here we have the cooling files here we have files Creality logo benchy in multicolor standard benchy in pla settings so here we have the brightness settings for the screen timer for when the screen powers off language selection 
self check, root account information, update reminder, time zone settings, bind to Creality Cloud, version checker, reset to default, expert mode, and about. Then we have network, that is where you will enter your Wi Fi details. And then we have camera, so enable time lapse photography, that is enabled. AI functions, AI detection is currently turned off. The box is unchecked for printing pores due to faults, so we'll leave that off for now. The sensitivity is on conventional and the auto pressure advanced calibration, PA, pressure advanced. That is also off, so we will leave that off for now. We'll go back. The next thing to do, pop in some filament. So we will just load in all these freebies that were sent with the machine. She'll grab a knife. I do apologize earlier on in the video, I said these are one kg spools, they're half a kilogram. Blue for all you city lovers. Red, white, and black. So what I have seen, these little stickers are the RFID chips. Feed the filament into the tube until it picks it up and loads. It's really that easy. Before I run a print, which will be one of the pre-installed ones for now, I will just basically go over some of the, the things that I've noticed. The door, for one, opens past 90 degrees. I still wouldn't put too much pressure on the door, as obviously you don't want to shatter it. So, bill volume for this machine. We've got 350 millimetres cubed. So it's a, it's a very good size bill volume for this machine, putting it above the max at 300 millimetres cubed. So we've got 50 mil in all directions, bigger print volume. The other thing that I've noticed that is different in the construction of this compared to the K1 series, we've got two linear rails both sides driven by two lead screws. So this gives a very, very rigid platform, which is all metal. All of the frame, again, is cast metal. As you saw when we unboxed it, it is incredibly heavy. The back, the middle panel appears to be the heating element. Then we've got two fans to exhaust the chamber either side of that. We've got the nozzle cleaner with the cut off and the poop chute at the back of the machine. We have quite chunky linear rail on the actual X axes which is nice to see. We've also then got two more smooth rails on the Y and the Z is on the four smooth rails driven by lead screws like I've just mentioned. The camera is built into the door pillar here. Don't forget to remove the camera cover. So there's a little rubber lens protector over that. So inside there, you've, you've also got LED light, which we've turned on and off. Textured, single-sided. I'd imagine you may be able to print on that side as well. I'm not sure. Don't hold me to that. That locates basically slightly to the back of the machine. You've got two little corner pieces that pick it up. You have a little smooth section at the back to just do the filament clean. And you also got a little scrubber on the actual poop chute as well. So when it does a filament change, the nozzle will clean up on that little rubber mat. So for inside the machine, that is that. The touch screen is slightly different revision to what we would normally see on the K1 series. They've modernized it a little bit. Interestingly enough, the ID chips have told the unit what colour filaments are installed. So, on that fine note, I do believe we shall commence a multicolour benchy. And it is going to print our benchy in white, black, blue and red, as shown in the picture. How clever. Print. So we'll let this do its thing, and then we'll come back in a short while when it's finished, and I will give you my final thoughts on this machine. Obviously, this is a very, very quick unboxing type first impressions video we will be doing a lot of test prints on this we will be pushing it to its boundaries to see if we can find any flaws and we will give you a true and honest summary once that has happened later here we are folks print complete 26 minutes in terms of benchy speeds that is not bad for a multicolor print i will open the door remove the bench and the prime tower and the L-shaped purge line. I peel away the brim. And I have to say, overall, the results are quite astounding. So I've got no real colour bleed, so it's purged and flushed nicely in the transitions of colour. So you haven't got a fading blue into the white or a white into the red causing pink. Overall, very good. There's no real artifacts on the print or ghosting. Very satisfactory. We will slice some more files for the machine and obviously run some more test prints. We will put those on the screen anytime now. But overall, first impressions, 
solid machine. I was talking to Chris earlier on that I feel between this and another machine that we've recently reviewed from Creality. Creality seem to have upped their game a little bit in terms of production and the quality of the products that they're now wanting to put out. The machine, like I said before, it weighs an absolute ton. So it's very, very solid. It's very robust. The components and the, the actual design of the internals are vastly improved on the K1 series of machines. It just seems a lot more polished and refined. The user interface, just a simple little modernization upgrade more than anything, but it, it looks more premium. It, you know, it, it, it looks nice. The CFS unit overall, very very impressed with how this unit operates and for serviceability and whatever else they've they've thought about it so all of your cubes that feed up into the actual cfs unit located on the bottom of the machine so you haven't got to go and disassemble the whole thing to do any service work you can daisy chain up to four of these units together the printer works absolutely faultlessly but we will do some larger models to give it a bit more of a test and obviously we will report back our findings on that and we will do a, a revisit long-term use review on this machine as well so yeah be sure to like and subscribe to make sure you don't miss out on that video if you're interested but overall first impressions very impressed the quality is good build area is a big upgrade anybody that's wanting a machine that's capable of printing larger volume this is definitely up there. In comparison size, this build volume is equates to the same as a War on 350 build volume, fully enclosed. So if you don't want to build your own printer, you can buy this one instead. Who would I say that this is aimed at? This machine, in my opinion, would be aimed at anybody, really. Right from an enthusiastic hobbyist, small batch production, schools, colleges, universities, anywhere for engineering prototyping, anybody that's got their own Etsy shop or eBay shop or, or whatever, to have this capability all in one package is, you know, a, a good deal. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please do not forget to like, subscribe and share. The link for this product will be down in the description. And if you have any questions on this machine or any other machine, please get in touch via the website and myself or some of the technical team will get back to you. Overall, very impressed. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and if you really want to, share. Bye for now. See you on the next one. As always, we aim to have the most competitive 3D printer prices on the market. If you see any of our printers being sold by a mainstream retailer for less, please drop us an email using the link in the description and we'll do our very best to beat their price. Also, if you're watching from outside the UK, check the description for links to our European 123 3D sister stores.